Live from New York, it's Us Engineer. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another Wednesday Thunder Snow, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Ask Engineer, it's me, Lady Ada, as always with me, Mr. Lady Ada. We are here at the Adafruit Factory where we make, design, create, fabricate, test, package, and ship thousands of electronic goodies that you know and love and make stuff with. And uh, after the factory kind of comes down a little bit, we're still here because we're broadcasting. We're going to do the show. And we've got an exciting show for you tonight. All sorts of cool stuff. What's on tonight's show? On tonight's show, uh, you guessed the code. Good work. Ooh. Thunder Snow. Hint. 10% off a native for star all the way up to 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, except for Ada boxes and gift certificates. It supports us, an open source hardware company. We're doing this. No loans of venture capital. If you buy stuff, we can keep this going. One day it'll end, but only because you didn't buy something. No pressure. Um, show and tell people around the world showing you sharing their stuff. In fact, mailbag's going to stop by. We're going to read your letters. Time travel, look back in the world of makers, hackers, artists, and engineers, current news, events, and more. Made in New York City footage. 3D printing. So new products. We'll answer your questions. We're in Discord right now. Adafruit.it slash Discord. We we'll have a trivia question where we give something away. All that and more on, you guessed it. Dun, dun, dun. Ask an engineer. That's us. Okay, okay. Uh, let's pay some bills here. First off, as you're shopping in the store, you may notice you get free stuff. Yes. So what does it get, lady? Okay. Adrian? If you order $99 or more of stuff, you will get a free Permaproto half-size breadboard. These are lovely white PCBs with gold pads, and they, they match up with a breadboard. So when you're done with your breadboard project, you can copy it over, and wow, like, look at how amazing you got to reuse your breadboard, and your circuit looks great. $199 or more, you get free UPS ground shipping, highest quality, trackable shipping that actually will show up when they say they're going to show up, much more likely than the Postal Service. Uh, you'll get that free UPS ground continental. Two nine or more, you will get a free Circuit Playground Express, our top of the line favorite developer board for beginners, somewhat beginners, and experts. Use it with MakeCode, CircuitPython, or Arduino. It's jam packed with tons of sensors and LEDs and all that good stuff. And every level, you get all the stuff that you would have gotten from previously. So it always pays to buy more. Yep. Okay. Um, also, all forms of shipping. Uh, UPS, Postal, DHL. DHL is probably the best deal for international. Yeah. Um, for the folks who ordered something today, Postal, um, Postal didn't pick up today because it's a... Um, Thundersnow. Thundersnow, and they just decided to pick up tomorrow. So if it's delayed, don't uh, don't yell at our team. We, there may also we, be... We couldn't control the weather yet. There may also be uh, difficulty getting out of the airport here, so just be aware. Yep. We can't control the weather. Uh, your your air shipment or ground shipment might be delayed I mean, a day. Collectively, we can we can probably control the weather, but in this specific instance, not today. Not today. Okay. Not just me and not just you. And same day delivery in NYC. If you check out before 11 a.m. and it's in Manhattan, you get same day delivery. Okay. Show and tell people around the world showing and sharing their projects. It's Lady true. Ada, what was on the show and tell this week? We had some people from Adafruit come by. We had John Park from Adafruit West. He showed off some really cool DIY picks that he made out of feeler gauges and like some that he made out of um, bristle street cleaner brushes uh, from Queens, New York, so you know that they're genuine. Uh, and how to make, um, use a torch to make uh, torsion wrenches and also how to put a nice um, handle on your pick. So if you're interested in uh, making your own DIY lock picks, which is like a super fun hobby, and I used to do that in high school. Um, check out his video. He doesn't know what he's doing tomorrow, but last video, last week's video was the DIY picks. Erin uh, showed off a project that she's working on. It's a painting of like a fire woman, and there's LEDs behind it when you touch the capacitive touch button. The, the neopixels light up behind the painting and make it look like it's like on fire. So it's really cool looking. Noon Pedro showed off last week's 3D printing project which is this uh the high pitch the, the yes the high pitch 64 by 64 led sand demo like an all-in-one raspberry pi sand demo physics toy uh super fun uh it's hard to keep your hands off it and they put handles on it so you don't have to and then uh this week's project is they made a uh chi charger using tpa plastic so like when they're in their car you can stick the phone onto the dash and it will, you know, the, the, um, the 3D printed dash insert and it will like stick in place like those, um, you know, it's like a charging mat, but you 3D print it, make yourself. Um, we also had some guests, Jake got some stuff. 
uh, some solar calipers, some, I had a 3D printer, uh, built a gaming PC, and is going to be making more stuff and will show it off on future show top apps. But the gaming PC was pretty sweet, it had like lights in it. Uh, Zach is still working on this like big project LED light suit with thousands of LEDs in it. The controller is in a glove and the controller has four magnetic hall switches for like a magnet butt button input. I guess maybe the magnet's on the thumb and you can touch the fingers. There's a haptic feedback. Um, there's also an NRF 24L01, which is a 2.4 gigahertz radio. And then <clears throat> the thing that I thought was most interesting is, I guess the light suit will react to music that he's playing. So the trick he did is, in the beginning of the audio track, there's a little um, like 20 kilohertz tone that humans can't hear. Even if they're wearing a, a furry suit that's like a dog suit, it, it doesn't give them the power to hear the high pitched tone. But his electronics does, and so it can sync up. It knows exactly. He doesn't have to like try to press the button right when you press his play on the audio. The microphone in the in the project will sync automatically and then react to the music. So he can pre-create the light effect, but have it start. And, we, and it seems like it's reacting to music. So that's a big part of, of costuming is just making it look like it's something more than it is. <clears throat> JMK got a Matrix keypad and an Arduino Nano and like basically got the keypad working. So when you press the bu button, the, the Nano is like, hey, you press button six and it's going to maybe unlock something. It's going to have a code and then it's a security system. I don't know, a lot of opportunities and possibilities. So we'll, uh, we'll catch up on that probably next week. Sean made an ultrasonic eyes with some LED matrices that follow you around the room. And uh, he's going to add some capacitive touch buttons, maybe. Kind of cute little robot, little robot friend that just like watches you, but like in, in a harmless way. Um, <clears throat> Isaac uh, got a Circuit Playground Express and turned it into a wake up lamp. So you, you type in what time you want to wake up, and then 30 minutes beforehand, it slowly gets brighter and brighter and brighter. And then when it's time to wake up, it um, makes an alarm sound. So it's a good circuit playground project, 3D printing a case for that. Yugitar is making a really cool cosplay prop off a Yu-Gi-Oh um, character with like a magician woman. And she's got this cool wand. So he's 3D printing all the pieces and he's putting NeoPixels in it. And like, it's gonna have the electronics and like the ball. It's like really cool. Just check it out. Cause like, it's hard for me to explain, but it's this cool like swirling shell of a, of a magician staff. And uh, he's building it for a friend who's going to be going to Anime Next Con. So that's a conference in the summer. So get started now. It's a good idea. Don't wait till a week beforehand. And finally, uh, C. Scott played us out. He's got a CircuitPython-based synth module and just told us about his OLED troubles. But I think the OLED troubles were OLED resolved. And I uh, gave some ideas from some future feathers as well. So it was all good times in the Chantel. Okay, all participants on the show and tell get an as seen on the show and tell sticker, email support at adafruit.com, and we'll send you out one if you're on the show and tell. Uh, part of our Adafruit live series of shows, we had a uh, desk of Lady Ada. Um, and motor samples. It, we did motor samples, so check it out on YouTube. It's interesting. And uh, we've been upgrading some of the um, video stuff. So if you notice, this show is now on 1080p, or it can be. Wow. And then we did that with desk of Lady Ada. So. Um, Yes. Bigger close-ups on the overhead is yeah. kind of nice. Um, and some cool motor stuff coming yeah. to the shop. JP's workshop. This is from um, last week. Um, his show's tomorrow, but this is uh, Lock Picking Tools Part 1 and Part 2. And I wanted to play a little clip from um, his previous one. Okay, pack the mailbag. These are the letters we read from you to us every single week at our company meeting called State of the Fruit. We also read them now. Um, this one's interesting because I think Phil is in the chat room. Um, I think he said this a long time ago. Um, I just want to drop you a note and say thank you so much for the live streams you do. I love asking an engineer and from Descalady. In fact, I have an Apple Watch configured to do the ding and buzz every time Adafruit goes live on Twitch, so I don't miss anything. Keep it up. We'll watch as much as you produce. And yes, it does successfully create sales. Great. Here's Phil, a.k.a. Uh, 
Hook us a tuna. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have some circuit Python mo uh, news, as we like to call it, Code Plus Community, because you don't just get a board, you don't just get a bunch of code. You get to join a big, fun community. You get a part, you get a community. So um, this one is interesting, and... It's a twofer. It's a twofer. Um, and then this is kind of... Like, what do you do when there's something like MicroPython and CircuitPython out there, and there's a bunch of drivers and you want it to have it work? So um, this was posted up today in the MicroPython forums. So maybe you could talk about this. This is from Stefan. I'd like to. Yeah, so what is, what is this thing? Because we, we asked him to help us out with it, and he did. Let me explain. Yeah. I'm going to drop some knowledge. So when we uh, designed CircuitPython, one of the things that we did is we wanted to have a unified API for interfacing with hardware because... Basically, like every time there's new hardware, everybody comes up with their own API. And we're like, look, we want it to be like, this is it. This is going to be our I2C API. And every board that we have CircuitPython run on will have the same API, which is great because I only want to write a driver once. I don't want to have to keep updating it. Um, MicroPython has some variation, and it also has a different uh, API just because they've picked different names and stuff. Like they use Pi, Pi B dot or you know, ESP dot. So what we did is um, we... Uh, uh, gave a community grant to Sefin, and uh, who's a developer who does stuff with MicroPython and Python, and we said, hey, we think it's possible for you to write basically an interfacing layer, a, 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 circuit, a circuit Python library set that if you ran it on a MicroPython board would give you that interface that you could run our drivers with. The upshot is that if you have a Pi board um, running MicroPython, you would be able to use all the drivers we've got. We have like 50 or 70 drivers right now. And like, you know, the sensor that I'm going to talk about uh, coming soon, I write drivers now in CircuitPython first and then port them to Arduino because I think it's actually easier. So you'll see all the sensors that we come out with will have CircuitPython, but we're probably not going to get around to, um, you know, porting them all to MicroPython. So this code, I'm going to do that. What's the, what's the point? The point is, check out this code on GitHub if you have a Pi board and uh, upgrade to the latest version and try installing this library. It, it's just it's pure Python and it should let you run uh, any of our drivers or I2C sensor drivers. I think SPI isn't quite working yet, um, but you are in I2C and digital IO is working. So you'll be able to um, for example, this sensor today, you'll be able to use it on a MicroPython board and you won't have to port the library yourself. Okay. So, yeah. try it out. And I think this will also help because if there's um, other forks or versions of whatever MicroPython variants, this might help people um, be able to use a lot of the drivers. Mm -hmm. That'd be nice. I think so. I think I, I, what I want to avoid is, is everyone just recreating the drivers over and over and over and over again. It's, yeah. it's a waste. I'd rather just have one good library and people can do pull requests. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, next up we have a release. This is 2.2.4 yes. of CircuitPython. Yes. So we have two version releases because yeah. we're we have stable and we have alpha. So the stable version 2, we have a very minor release 2.2.4. The only update here is that um, the dot star LEDs in newer boards, like um, the newer, most people don't have them yet, but they revise the LEDs and they're dimmer. So we just wanted to tweak the code a little bit, the runtime code, so the LED that you use to debug that lets you know like what's going on with your um, circuit Python board, the itsy bitsy M0, the trinket M0, the Gemma M0. We made it just a, a little bit brighter, so it's, it's kind of in between. It's like a little bit bright on the current boards and a little bit dim on the other ones, but it's like, it's a good color just because we have no control over um, the, the LEDs just changed their brightness a little bit. Um, so that's very minor. Uh, and uh, you don't really have to uh, check that out unless you happen to have one of the newer boards, okay. which you probably don't. And we have an update 3.0.0 alpha two. Um, this is the, uh, it, it works, but not perfectly stable, it's experimental. We've added uh, SAMD51 M4 support, NRF52 support, ooh, that's exciting. If you have an NRF52 832 chip or board, you might wanna check this out. We have CircuitPython running on it. We even have a little bit of Bluetooth stuff going on it as well. And uh, we're gonna keep working on that. It's We're not guaranteeing NRF52 will work for 3.0, but yeah, there's some in there, try it out. And uh, the heap fix, that Scott did for uh, re reworking how um, long-term and short-term heap memory gets allocated 
kind of splits the heap up a little bit to reduce fragmentation. So if you're having issues with code where you are having memory errors, you're not able to allocate because the, the garbage collector is like, you're out of memory. You probably do have memory, it's just, it's just Swiss cheesed. Uh, try out 3.0.0 alpha 2. Okay. Right. Um, so we have some other news. Um, if y'all are fans of Adam Savage's Tested, Tested.com, um, this was a little bit of a surprise. So a few people sent this in in the Adafruit community. There is a, a show they do, and there's a segment, and it's like, what did you test? What did you do? And we had nothing to do with this. This did, we didn't. We don't. We didn't call them. We didn't we know. Didn't text yeah, them. we don't. We don't know what was what was happening. Order. But one of the hosts has a, a kid, and uh, wanted the kid to do some type of programming and coding. So I just straight up took two minutes from that show, and I'm just going to play it. Because it's kind of not like we write about Circuit Playground, and and uh, once in a while someone will um, write about it on other sites or something. But it's really neat to hear from someone firsthand about their experiences with it. Yeah. And uh, the, it was interesting because it's like I guess we're based in San Francisco, and I, and you know the language is a little different because it's another country. And no, it is. <laughs> they haven't seceded yet, although it's I haven't a, checked CNN. It's a, it's another <laughs> country, and. Uh, the compliment was it was criminally easy, which I kind of like. And then I then I played Smooth Criminal for you yeah. through uh, one of the interactive uh, AI devices that we have where you try to beg it to tell you a song, <laughs> yeah. and it just laughs at you. Yeah. That's what happens. Like, literally. But uh, anyways, so what I thought I would do is I, I'd play this. It's about two and a half minutes. It's from the Tested.com podcast. And uh, anyways, uh, was high praise. Tough crowd. Criminal. Criminally easy. Criminally easy. Smooth Take it away. Criminal. Tested. Adafruit has this cool product, um, and it's called the Circuit Playground. Uh, there's a newer one. Uh, they came out with one, you know, like a year and a half ago, and then r more recently in the past, um, I don't know, several months, they came out with a new one. The Circuit, I think it's Playground Express. Oh God, <coughs> where'd my web browser go? Um, and it's it's super cheap. It's like twenty dollars, uh, and it's made to help teach people. It's twenty five dollars. The new one is, um, and it's made as like an introductory you know, piece of hardware if you want to learn to tinker, learn to, learn to make, learn to code. And it's, it's criminally easy to, to, make this, to make this thing do things. I got one for my 11-year-old who's never touched Arduino, an IDE, in his lifetime. Uh, he does have experience with Scratch, which is a uh, graphical drag-and-drop programming uh, you know, interface developed at <coughs> MIT. Well, not only is the Circuit Playground Express compatible with Arduino code and uh, Python, it has like a drive, you log in, you just type your Python and it can run. It's also compatible with this scratch-like interface, um, which I think was developed at Microsoft and Adafruit uses strictly for the Circuit Playground Exp Express. So you plug the thing into your computer, you then go to the website on, on Adafruit and you drag and drop your hardware con commands you type in your variables. I said, look, see if you can make a security motion detector. I left the room and within like two minutes, he'd never touched anything. He had a thing working where it, when he picked it up, it sounded an alarm and the lights flashed. And it wasn't a prefab program. That's cool. So anybody, uh, like frustratingly so, can make, I mean, for, for anyone who's done actual programming, it can make what they want on this thing. It has lights, sound, buttons, temperature sensor, um, an IR sensor, and receiver, so you can have two of them, and they can communicate with each other. It has a battery port, has touchable contacts um, that do capacitive touch. It's got, uh, did I say, a, like a real speaker. Um, it's super cool. I, I, it's for 25 bucks. It just has so many things, and it's so easy to make things with. It's super cool. So I just wanted to say, nice job, Adafruit. You put programmers out of business. Okay, so thanks, Tessa. That was very nice. You've Good. been compiled by Good. a smooth criminal. That's right. <laughs> um, so some other news. We have uh, PyCon coming up pretty soon. More snakes. There were some sneak peeks, but you can assume that there'll be something in the swag bag. We're a swag bag sponsor. Mm, there's something This is kind of our there. big sponsorship of the year. Um, there's going to be something in there. It'll be PyCon related, Python related. It'll be cool. It'll be neat. And it'll, it'll be open source. And it'll only be for this event. So that's Can't what say any more. No, we can't. Go to PyCon. Okay. Uh, time travel, look back world makers, hackers, artists, engineers, and more. Um, this week's time travel, happy birthday, Raspberry Pi. 
Foundation, six years old. Yay! So this is a little banner we made. Happy birthday. <laughs> and uh, Foundation, six years old. One of the coolest things about the Raspberry Pi Foundation, because they're always doing interesting things, but let me tell you my two okay. favorite things about the Foundation two, right now. Two, number one. Hackspace Magazine. It's really nice. And, and Moo. Yeah, they help support the community grants yeah. for Moo. Yeah. They're they, working on software now, usability. Yep. Yeah, so I can go through an entire list of all the things that the foundation's done from releasing the Raspberry Pi mm -hmm. to um, they have Hello World Magazine. They have, of course, um, Magpie. Mm -hmm. But I really, this is most recent stuff. Hackspace Magazine and Moo. Moo, Easy Editor, REPL, Python Sport, everything in there has Adafruit boards. And then Hackspace, um, really celebrating the maker community that's out there. I love how Hackspace is really tied into, it's, it is it is by and for makers. Like yeah. really every every time I open, I'm like, hey, wait, I know this person, I've heard yeah. of this person. And then, you know, we see them on show and tell and then they, they put their project yeah, out. Yeah, so it's a good time to be a maker. You got Hackspace, you got Make Magazine, you got 2600, um, you have uh, Diode Magazine, there's um, Circuit Seller, there's there's a bunch of ch there's it, there's online places Dian, Hackaday yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you name it it's out there right now so if you've ever wanted to f look and see what's being made um, but the, I really like how the Pi Foundation's doing that so happy Pi Day oh and uh, don't forget if you are a maker and you're watching which is probably true um, Hackspaces and, and Maker are always looking for authors so don't even if you're like not yeah. sure like oh is my project cool enough it's totally cool enough yep right um, so they had a uh, Raspberry Pi Jam just this weekend. And uh, I thought this was neat. This is, a, I, I grabbed this off Twitter. Um, one of the things we're noticing is the Raspberry Pi is a fantastic, uh, like, low-cost computer. Yep. And young people are using that to learn how to code. Mm -hmm. However, the thing that they're coding on is a circuit Playground Express. It because adds, they could it take adds it, all the sensors. Yeah, because yeah. they could take it with them. I designed the circuit Playground Express, actually, to not intersect with the Raspberry Pi. So it's almost nothing that they both do. Like all the stuff that the Circuit Playground does, capacitive touch and NeoPixels, little speaker, um, yeah. you know, analog inputs, that's the stuff that you don't get on a Raspberry Pi. So combined, yeah. you know, you can use the Raspberry Pi's super fast processing capabilities and then control this little, this little helper board that just does the analog and, and sensor stuff for you. Yeah. So anyways, I, I noticed that because I'm seeing that. And then uh, I sent a note to PyTop in Canada. They, they make like kind of desktop computers. I'm like, hey, like we're noticing this. You may want to like look into it. Mm -hmm. People are going to do it anyways. Um, but I thought that was neat. Um, it's kind of an, un I think it's an unintended or unexpected use of um, these like desktop pi like machines. Yeah. Because they make enclosures and stuff from. Okay. Anyhow, um, next up, Women's History Month. Right now, it's on our website. Um, this is kind of neat. And to celebrate that, and it just happened to be good timing, the next episode of Women in Hardware is coming out, brought to you by Adafruit, Hackster, Microsoft, Autodesk, and this time, Qualcomm. So, um, do you want me to read this off? Yeah, you can you can read off um, when I uh, have, we have like a mini trailer and then a trailer trailer. Okay, you have to let me um, know. But first I wanted to say thanks uh, to Qualcomm for um, doing this. Let me tell you something, everybody. Um, Listen up. Yeah, this is going to be a little bit of a rant. And Oh uh, boy, we're here. that's what we're here for. It's a little bit of a rant. Let me get my rant pants well, on. Well, because I don't... You're 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 always positive and like you're Lady Ada, but but th there's a bunch of things that go into running an Adafruit and and, and working with a, a woman-owned company. So one of the things we always hear is from these giant companies that oh, we'd love to do something with uh, women in tech and we'd love to do oh, something in STEM. Oh, diversity. Yeah. Was, and, oh yeah. And and the companies that actually did these are the ones. So Qualcomm, Autodesk, Microsoft, Hackster, and Adafruit. Well, we're doing this with Hackster, but I just want to say thanks to Qualcomm because you know there's a lot of companies. I'm not going to name them because it would be mean, but um, they promise. Oh, we have these diversity efforts. We're going to um, do grants and all that. But it's they even do like advertisements talking about how they're so into diversity and then. Okay, well, straight up, actually, I will pick on someone. GE, <laughs> GE does that all the time, and it's not okay. There's a lot of efforts that they promise they're going to do, but they just do advertising about about like mythical things yeah. so anyways no they make up like fake women too so yeah like, so, th so i'm picking on ge um it's always fun to pick on GE. i'm picking on ge and don't worry we already talked to them and we're like hey do you want to do this thing and they're like we have no budget and we can't do it um so anywho but i want to thank the companies that do because it, it matters there's a lot of coordination and a lot of stuff so thanks qualcomm um so tomorrow um we're releasing this yep and um this one this is the next one um this is uh tia cassett um she has 23 patents and she's also the project product manager for Qualcomm. So Snapdragon, probably heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. 
single board computers. Yep. Also um, used in cell phones. Yeah, so there's full interview. We also have uh, Mary Youngman, who works with Adafruit. And so uh, we also have a tour of their place. So I wanted to first um, show just a little bit about what Qualcomm does with STEM. So this is one part of that trailer. Okay. Because they should get credit for that because yeah. they do a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, thank you again. And then um, I just wanted to show just a sped up version of the, the video that we're going to that we're going to play later. So this is a little bit about Qualcomm. Qualcomm strongly supports STEM initiatives that inspire the next wave of inventors with programs like the Qualcomm Think a Bit Lab and FIRST. Additionally, the company enables the makers community by bringing Qualcomm technologies to products like the Dragonboard 410C development board. And uh, this is the, you know, the 22nd version of the, the interview. So you can learn all about the uh, Snapdragon. You can learn all about what Qualcomm's doing with STEM. They have this amazing workshop that they do and with kids. And what do they do? Um, well, we just played that video. I know, but it's like, that's the thing. Like, most people don't even know. Yeah, I think people kind of know. Qualcomm's in the news once in a while. I think they're, oh, they didn't make a chip for, like, you know, a device or something. But this this will get, this will... This will give you a, exactly a good idea to see what they do. And then you can see all the STEM efforts that they do um, from their lab and more. Okay. Okay. So that's going to come out tomorrow. All right. All right. So thanks, Episode Axer. Three. Yeah, thanks, Axer, and thanks, Qualcomm, for making this happen. And if you work at a big company and you hear people talking the talk, well, um, have them get a hold of Hackster and Adafruit because we're um, looking to celebrate amazing folks, not just press releases. Not just press releases. <laughs> Representation matters. Yeah. Okay. Uh, open source hardware. We're an open source hardware company. We have 1,399 guides. Wow. Okay, 1,400 coming up. Okay, what's on the big board this week, Lady Ada? Okay, so I think the first five. Okay, so we have the LED matrix sand toy. That's the bottom right. So that's new. That's from last week. So that's that really cool 64 by 64 matrix with our new matrix bonnet that I pretty much designed just to build this project because everybody was like, I want one of these sand toys. Um, so you can pick up a Pi Zero and um, Matrix bonnet, or 64 by 64 Matrix, and 3D print these cool handles, then the enclosure and put it together and make this really fun physics toy. Um, Liz Clark did an awesome guide, an HSV and RGB NeoPixel dialer. So she, showed, she showed this off on Twitter a little bit, but it's basically got three potentiometers and a NeoPixel strip, and as you turn the pots, it'll display on the LCD the red, green, blue values, or the or you can do hue, saturation, V, shoot, I don't remember what it is. And HSV, whatever we it is. We have a guide. What? We have a guide. We have a guide. Check it out. Yeah. <laughs> what is What's V? There? We'll find out. Read the guide. Um, What's there for? And the NeoPixels will change. So if you're wondering, like, oh, I want this color for my cosplay outfit, or like I want to decorate my room with this color, and you, it's hard to really know what it looks like until you see it on NeoPixel, um, this dialer, We'll do that for you so you can like dial it to your desires because like, there's 16 million different colors right you want to get the perfect one we have um the first of a series of lessons from simon monk who's written our excellent raspberry pi and arduino uh, uh library uh, lesson guides like multi-lesson guides and he also got some great books that he's written um so if you like this free micro bit lesson check out his book as well which goes into more detail with the micro bit one of the things that we um are working with him on for these lessons is each lesson can be written in make code so drag and drop scratch like programming or micro python using moo or you can use arduino which like i kind of put together a little bit of a tutorial on how to get that going so no matter whether you're like an ultra beginner uh, and you're like i just want to drag and drop blocks and just get something going really fast you want to use micro python because you're like python's cool or you want the ultra power of Arduino so you can take advantage of all the Arduino libraries as well. Um, this is gonna be really great. And also it's kind of acts like a Rosetta Stone. Cause if you're like, I wanna do something in make code or MicroPython and I have some Arduino code that does it, you can see the differences between the code, how to replicate it. And it'll help you go between the, the three different ways of programming, which I think is really good. Uh, we also have this week's 3D printing project, the Car Chi Charger. We talked about that, there's a little okay. video we're gonna show. And finally, a guide for uh, our new sensor this week, which is the AM2320. Uh, this guide has uh, pinout information, CircuitPython, and Arduino libraries, and hookup details for that sensor. Okay. So that's 1400 all next at, week. Yeah, we'll be up to 1400. Learn.adafruit.com. Okay. 
uh, we started a new segment. I just have a photo of it. We did uh, Metro Monday. So every Monday we have some uh, projects and or little product spotlight. Check that out. We make those here. Um, speaking of in NYC, here is some factory footage. video. This is board loader. Stenciler. Pick a place. Pick a place too. Transfer. Those are our NRF boards. Yep. The uh, RFID boards that we made. Oven. Beep, beep, beep. And that's how it's made. And of course here is an Adafruit Sunset. So this looks like nothing like it is now. No, that, this is like but without the thunder. Like if we took a photo outside, it'd be like just yeah. white. Oh, speaking of, don't forget to code a thunderstorm. Thunder snow. Thunder Sorry. <laughs> thunder snow, because it's a rare thing to say. Thunder snow, 10% off snow. the Adafruit store. Okay, some 3D printing. No, Pedro, we're catching up from last week. So we have two videos and then a couple sped up. So we're going to just play them one after the other. Take it away. Yeah, we have and a little Pedro. thing and then we have the uh, key, charger. Key, charger. Key, key charger. Key charger. Key charger. Okay, here we go. Hey, what's up guys? Today we're building a giant LED physics toy. Just like our small version, these LEDs look like little grains of sand that interact with motion and looks like they're affected by gravity. We designed and 3D printed a frame with handles so it's easy to pick up and play around with. Buttons on the handle allow you to switch between different modes and you can also reset the animation. To drive the display, we're using Adafruit's RGB matrix bonnet for the Raspberry Pi. You can get the parts to build this project from Adafruit, links are in the description. You can download the 3D printed design from the tutorial on the Adafruit learning system. The Pi Zero, Power Boost, and Accelerometer are secured to the main bracket using machine screws. The Raspberry Pi bonnet just fits on top of the Pi Zero. We'll wire up a DC barrel jack to the Power Boost and connect it to the bonnet to power the whole circuit. The RGB matrix comes with its own IDC ribbon cable and power cord. You can use the included thumb screws to secure the 3D printed parts to the frame. The mounted board assembly is attached to the back using additional machine screws. This whole setup is portable so you can pick it up, move it around, and it's hassle free. Just connect the terminals from the power cable to the screw block terminals and plug in the IDC cable to the bonnet. A dedicated bracket will house this large LiPo battery. Just plug it into the power boost and you can easily recharge the battery over USB. The two buttons are panel mounted to the handles and wired up to spare GPIO pins on the bonnet. We use these quick disconnects to make the button wiring easy. You can find the Pixel Dust library and demo code on the tutorial for this project on the Adafruit Learning System. Links are in the description. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more DIY projects from Adafruit.
Hey, what's up guys? Today we're gonna to show you how we built a custom Qi charging pad for the Tesla Model 3. Behind our 3D printed mat is a wireless charging transmitter. So now we can easily charge the devices without having to plug them into the console. The stock mat on the Model 3 is a bit clumsy, especially with a tethered cable. Our phone can actually slip into the center console because of the way the mat is designed. So this is why we designed and 3D printed a replacement. Our design accommodates for bigger devices and features a ledge to prevent any slip out. This universal Qi charger supports all types of smart devices so it's really easy to add wireless charging to your projects. We've used this exact setup for previous DIY projects like our charging stand and portable batteries so definitely check those out for more project ideas. Links are in the info cards and description. If your device doesn't have built-in wireless charging, you can actually add one of these charging receivers. They're super thin and really easy to install. Basically just plug them in and stick it to the back. So definitely check out all of the Qi charging products. You can get them from Adafruit. We designed our charging pad to precisely match Tesla's original mat. On the back, it says the mat is made of TPU material, which is actually the same material we're gonna use for 3D printing. We use digital calipers to take precise measurements of the posts and registration keys. We sketched out dimensions using Autodesk Fusion 360. Built-in standoffs will secure the charging circuit directly to the back of the pad. We also added a flange along the edge to offer better structure so it's not so floppy. To 3D print the mat, we used the Ultimaker 2 Plus 3D printer and the Cura slicing software. The built-in material profiles for TPU filament works really well. We also used a bigger nozzle which reduced the print time so we can print much faster. The TPU filament we're using is NinjaFlex Cheetah which has a shore hardness of 95A so it's very flexible, heat resistant, and super durable like you seriously cannot break this stuff. To install the circuit we just need to slide the Qi charging base into the cavity. We used M3 screws to attach the PCB to the built-in standoff so it's nice and secure. The bottom bumper is a separate piece which is nice since we won't have to use any support material so it's optimized for 3D printing. It's got a snug fit so we won't need any glue to hold it in place. Installation is as easy as pulling out the stock mat and plugging in the Qi charger to the built-in USB ports. An extra USB port here is also available to charge other devices which is nice since you won't end up taking up another USB port. Wirelessly charging makes it really convenient while you're driving so you won't have to worry about tangling up your cables. It also fits the minimal aesthetics of the Model 3 so it looks nice and clean. So if you want to build your own, check out the links in the description of this video. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one. Okay, and don't forget 3D Hangouts every Wednesday with No and Pedro. They just one did one today. Okay, a um, little reminder: if you got an Adabox, we're going to be doing the unboxing live April. It's third. Yeah, April third, yeah. and uh, some of them will be going out next couple weeks. 
So get ready, the guides will be going up and more. Um, so that's coming. And if you want, you can start subscribing with Ada Box H, which is the perfect time to start subscribing. Yes. Even if you missed out on seven, it's okay. Trust me on this one. Um, so go to adabox.com. Yes. And get an Ada Box every quarter. Um, and then one last thing before we get to some new products. Um, remember we had those coasters? Yeah. Well, here's a preview of the coaster photos because I thought this was neat. We we had if if you were someone on camera, we made these Adafruit mugs. So it was like. Colin, Becky, and I—that's pretty much it. Um, I'm the lady, eight, of course. And then I have a next mug, um, which is like that's a fun. 20-year-old mug. Somehow it survived decades. And you get that nice, like, yeah. Ring. So, anyways, cool. I thought I'd show a preview. These we're, coasters we're are clearly effective. That. Yeah, and those are the only glasses we really have at home. Um, I'm so glad no one sees how we live, because like, what we do is Adafruit, it, so yeah. we have like the raccoons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like it's true. Like that's, that's that's I had to bring them in for the team, and that's pretty much how we drink out of. That's it. Yeah. Anyways, um, okay. <laughs> this is what it is. Um, so before we get on new products, uh, Thunder Snow, ten percent off an for store. Uh, Lady, let's do this. Thunderous. Yes. Okay. What's new? Okay. Start off. We've got these cables. So you're probably like, what's up with these cables? So we um, we already carried HDMI cables, but these are like really sweet. I don't know if you can tell why. They're molded yeah. with the Raspberry Pi leather. They're official nice. Raspberry Pi cables. You can tell they're a little bit chunkier than um, the cables we had before. So if you have like a slim spot, you have to slide them through. These might not work, but we had no problem getting it to work with any, you know, TV or whatever that we used. Yeah. And of course, they've got this sweet Raspberry Pi logo. So I thought, yeah, you Also know a great way to support the Raspberry Pi Foundation. That is true. Every Everyone's like, I wish I could do something. It's like, here you go. Here every you go. purchase yeah. helps support them. Okay, did you want to show them on the overhead or something? Yeah, let me, um, okay. let me grab my bin. I got the uh, the overhead in like, you know, 1080p now. So like, yeah. and let me make sure I did. I think we did over the weekend. Oh, yeah. yeah, I want to make sure. HDMI. I just got a lot, I got a lot of samples here today. Let's see what it does. You see every hair. <laughs> Yeah, it's 1080. Okay. Okay. All Are right. you ready? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, it's just it's just bigger and better. Now. It's just bigger and better. Um, okay, so this is... Let's see if I can zoom in. Oh, yeah, sorry. Just, press, the wrong, press the wrong button. Yep. That's my fault. Yeah, so you get these... Uh, it says HDMI. It's tested, you know, Raspberry Pi. Like, they, they do a really good job making sure the cables are really good quality, so you're not going to have With any With all problems. this resolution, I make sure you focus each time. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Fast on the trigger mm. there. High speed, HDMI has you know can support Ethernet. So it's a good cable. It's one meter long. I, I like this one. It doesn't have um, big chunky ferrites. It doesn't need them, and uh, it's shielded and has a small. So you can tell by the pixels. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Okay. What's next? Next up is I don't uh, know what's next. Oh yeah. I think the storm finally hit us, by the way. Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, next up. There. Tool shed. Okay, so this is actually like junk I recommend. These are gorgeous. So there's two parts. There's This is the coloring book. And this is um, a person by the name of Lawrence King. Their grandparent had a beautiful tool shed with all these tools in it. And, you know, like nothing really beats, like, your grandpa, you know, beautiful tools. And uh, they've lasted this long. So what they did is they actually took out all the tools from the shed and drew them, and it turned it into a coloring book, so you can color them in yourself. So I thought I would show some pages from this book. Okay. This is like every nail, compass, C-clamp, like some rusted machine screws, and I don't know what these are even, the standoffs, nails, like every single nail on like one screw. <laughs> um, this is a really beautiful coloring book. And you can tell, like, you know, you can really, like, feel how the, the tools were loved and, and used and, and built a lot of stuff around the house and, and took care of people. So if you're a tools fan, uh, you can finally uh, color in all of your favorite wire strippers. And I, I think there's also a soldering iron in here somewhere. Actually, this is my favorite drawing. Okay. This, uh, this paint can is beautiful. So, anyways, it's a coloring book. Um, it's really gorgeous. So, yeah, it's a good gift or if you just like to color. All right, and we have another one. We also have a um, notebook. It's a, it's a journal, and it has some of the drawings.
things um, from the coloring book. And also on the opposite page, it has like a blank page. The images could. It's, um, it's the outside and on the inside. So you have little drawings, um, selected drawings, then most of the journal, it's got a special touch to it. Okay. Next up. Element. This one is, well, there's two. They also look identical. Um, one of them is conductive composite PLA. These are both three millimeter filaments. They look nearly identical, so it's kind of tough. I think this is sensing um, or other elements. I think this could be kind of neat. We did a couple projects with flexible like this. Okay. Um, and uh, sorry, can you go back? Uh, I think the, they look the same, but they're actually different. So there's that one. This is a different filament. It just looks identical. This is the composite rustable. And I think it's even, you, it, it, will, uh, it will attract a magnet. It's not magnetic, but it will attract a magnet and it will rust. And I, we thought this would be really neat if you're, if you're a cosplayer and you want to make like a prop that's 3D printed that looks like a hammer. Or maybe like one of those tools that you sell. Kind of interesting. Okay. Well, it doesn't look like the internet's really working out so much. All right. What do you want to do? Keep going? Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah. I mean, let's just talk into this, like, orb. What's next? Uh, this is a capacitive touch lamp. Um, it's a bare conductive kit. You get the board and you get um, the the paper lamp capability and then you use the bare conductive tube to make like a capacitive touch lamp so you can see from the video pretty much what it does a couple different lamp uh, arrangements that you can make all with paper and conductive ink a new product video since the... okay and then yeah uh, this is the rest up. of it yep and finally we have oh second to finally we have the 2320 this is a sensor that has i squared c temperature and humidity it's a very low cost, but we have Arduino and CircuitPython libraries for it. Okay, and what's up? This is an update to the Wi-Fi. So we've carried this for a while. This version is uh, basically identical, except it has the latest version of the ESP32 chip, which fixes a couple of deep sleep power issues, and also updates the amount of RAM to four megabytes and the amount of flash to eight megabytes. It's a nice little upgrade. All right, and uh, with that is uh, new products. So, um, I mean, I guess we'll try to do a recap just to see what happens. Um, you want to try this? Sure. Okay. No, 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 no. All right, what was on the ship? Okay, we had these one meter long HMI cables. They're updated. They are now official Raspberry Pi cables with these lovely molded connectors on the ends. So you can support the Raspberry Pi Foundation. We have this shed coloring book. This beautiful coloring book has drawn in. There's a journal. This journal takes images from, it's from the same author, it has images and a lot of blank pages so you can love the images but also draw your own. Make notes. We have conductive PLA filament. Uh, conductive, good for sensing capacitive touch. We have three millimeter rustable iron filament that's uh, ferrous and can rust, breaking props that you want to age. We have the very conductive lamp kit. You can make three different kinds of lamps. Comes with the paper, cutouts, and some bare conductive ink. You can own your capacitive touch lamps. We have the AM2320. It is a temperature sensor that uses I squared C, but it's very low cost. And we've got Arduino and CircuitPython code for it. Okay. We've got the update to the Y. This version comes with more memory. Otherwise, it's very similar. It has ESP32 with four megabytes of RAM and eight megabytes of flash. All right, that's it. Those are new products. Okay, well, um, as you can tell, the code is thunder snow because it's even thundering right now. Yeah, uh, right before we got on air, of course, like internet. We're we're in an internet provider building, and even they were having problems. Yeah. We have a failover, but even that was. Uh, well, they're both failing. They're both failing. Um, okay, so let's um, let's go answer some questions in Discord. See how this works out. Okay. T slash Discord. 
can go in there and talk about how your screen is buffering, and I'll say it's weather. Uh, let's uh, let's see what questions there are. If, if someone's not getting audio, I'll just I, I've told them to ask questions here. Uh, let's see. What's the best way to send an email to the team? Uh, someone got a uh, huge order and the packaging was a thing of beauty. Yep, supported Adafruit.com. Team you likes can, to hear you it. You can send kudos. Yeah, call it a hug report. They like that. Yeah, that's why no one does a live show. Why? No, I know. It's why? Because like, it's, not, like, it'll never, it's never good enough, never fast enough, and the weather happens once a year, and it's like, why do it? Why expose yourself? Why do it? I don't know. Crazy. Why do it? Okay, uh, let's see. Will there be an Ada guide for the Itsy Bitsy M0? Um, PID 3727, which pins are P capable, which are kept at Um, There isn't a guide yet. We will hopefully have one soon. Um, basically, the only way to know for sure which are ca cap touch capable is to uh, either try circuit Python. If you try to make a passive touch pin on that and it doesn't work, then you know. Um, or if you use our free touch library, our free touch library will work and will basically fail if you try to create a passive touch on that pin. Um, the PWM pins, almost every pin has a PWM on MD, except for... Okay. Uh, next up. Do, 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 do. Um, someone like to use a LoRa breakout to... A uh, SPI, a Bitbang, with Arduino. Um, I don't know if you'd be able to do it with Circuit Python, but you can try. I know that there, there, you know, of the seven pins that are available, you can definitely get SPI on it. But you're going to be on your own a little bit on actually getting that working. And once you find out which pins are the SPI pins, um, they're not labeled. So you're going to have to either in Circuit Python just try to create uh, you know, the SPI port and, and see if it works. Um, but then the library should just work uh, as is. It, it doesn't care whether it's running a Circuit Playground or a Feather. Okay. Uh, Someone's asking about this is actually not a plushie. It's a puppet. Um, we don't we don't have blanket plushies. This is a this is a puppet. See. So not a plushie. And, uh, yeah, see. Hey. Okay. So, next up, uh, we'll try. Um, we also have them as standalone boxes that you can order later, and that can get to Australia. Yes. Um, which came first, the dead beef thing or a CDC? You know, that little code thing? I think people have been using OX dead beef for a very, very long time. Filament. The Probably filament we not. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, plastic is tough to electroplay. I mean, you can try. If it does, let us know. But I'm going to guess you probably can't. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. do you have a guide on how to make a Arduino library? Not automating one, but just making one that works across the platform. We don't. Um, my best bet, my best recommendation is just take a library that's similar to the one you're trying to make and then just recycle as much as you can. That's kind of how most people make libraries. Um, and it's a pretty good way of doing it, and then hopefully you'll kind of learn. There's Arduino, I think, has a little. Is it okay on asking an engineer to ask an engineer? Yeah, ask your questions to a lady. I'm the engineer. It all works out. OK. Uh, let's see. I think, oh, how do you how do you uninstall Circuit Python? Like, if you put it on a board, if you want to if you want to put other things on it. If you want to upload Arduino, um, just um, open up Arduino IDE and then you double click the circuit path on board, get into bootloader mode, and then select that in the drop down, and you can just upload whatever Arduino. And once you've uploaded an Arduino sketch, you, it'll just have to look at Arduino and it'll automatically go to the bootloader. You just have to, the first time, you have to double click it. Okay. Uh, someone's making a PCB, oh, Bill is making a PC Featherwing. The NCP23017 port expander will work. Do you recommend we just go with Seesaw at this point? Um, no, I think that, the, you know, the MCP23017, it's, it's, it's a popular chip. There's a lot of drivers, for it, so I, I don't see any reason not to. If you don't need anything more than the GPO expander, it's a good GPO expander, and it's available in DIP format, so if you want to manufacture them yourself, um, it's really easy where a Seesaw runs on a, like a QFN chip, you need a J complicated. Okay, last question. Uh, this is, why do the I2C pins on M0 processor like the input that you use for digital I.O. while using it as an I2C peripheral? You can 
AVRs. It's a hack. Um, AVRs are much simpler chips. The peripherals on the M0s are much more complicated, so you'll need external pull-ups. Okay. All right. And with that, questions? We got through some. So I read them off. They were in Yay. Discord. Uh, let's do a true question. Um, okay. the, the phone lines are probably not going to work because they're connected to the internet. <laughs> yeah. So let's uh, let's try it anyways. What uh, what do you want to give away? Well, if somebody's able to call in, let's give away one of the um, bear conductive uh, lamp kits. Okay, bear conductive lamp kit. What are the rules? Okay, the rules are if you've won something before, can't enter again. Only one winner per my lifetime. First person to call the phone number. I pick it up and I ask you your name, where you're calling from, and a project you're working on or you want to work on, and you actually manage to answer those and don't hang up on me, is the winner. Okay. And uh, that's it. That's the rules. All right. Uh, here's the phone number. Phone Try calling open. this. It may or may not work. Yeah, I don't think because it's Because it's working. Well, yeah. It's just there's a severe, I don't know if you've, severe weather right now. I don't know if we've mentioned the thunder snow yet. Yeah, that's a code. But, but there's thunder. We'll see if anyone calls. Check this anyways. Thunder snow. You can even hear it thundering. Yeah. So there's like there's probably a foot of snow outside. It'll be fun. Yep. Do 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 do. Yeah, I don't even think it's uh, making it to the various places. Yeah, it's just like dying. Well, we tried. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, yeah, it's... Donk! <laughs> yeah. So I think we'll, uh, we'll postpone this one for this week. Because it's just not working out. So, uh, yeah, sorry, folks. Go to Thundersnap. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if this makes it up to the, the show. Um, for the archive. Well. Is this hanging out? No phone lines. <laughs> okay. So, so here till the end of the earth. Yeah. Uh, here's the code. I don't even know if anyone's watching this right I now. I don't think so. I think I just, just talking. Uh, that's our here with the remote folks, um, all our Adafruit community. Anyone who's like getting this at one frame per minute. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's uploading at all. Okay, uh, that's our show. Uh, here is your moment of Zener, and then we'll play a song on the way out. For nobody. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what happens. Okay, bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Anybody? <laughs>